Hi, I'm Tim Carter from TJC TV, and I'm here with Frank Hardison. Frank, thanks for letting me in here to your house. Show us what we got here, real All quickly. Right. Well, it's pretty hard to show you in a few I'm, minutes if you've got a few days why well, we might be able to do it. But this is sort of the history of golf in its equipment. That is the balls and the clubs principally, but some other things too. The uh, balls started out with the, really with a feathery ball. Okay. There were some balls that people knocked around, but they were just rocks or wooden, you know, bowls. And how did they make the feathery ball? Right, the feathery ball was made by stitching up some uh, the skin of, say, a bull skin, and uh, you can look if Russ wants to move over. You see a picture of one. That's the equipment they used to make it, and that's a picture of the, the after the skin was stitched, in a way, they had to stitch it, and then they had to leave a small space, about like this, it's amazing how small it was. Like, a little, like a little incision, like yeah, a little to cut. to turn it inside out, because they didn't want the stitches on the outside, okay. like a, you know, a baseball or something, right. they didn't okay. want that. So they had to pull the whole ball through that. Then they had that situation, all right. Then they carefully stuffed a full top hat full of goose feathers. They wet the, t they soaked the goose feathers to make them wet, and when goose feathers uh, dry out, they expand. At least that's the theory. Okay. And of course, as uh, wet skin dries out, it shrinks. Right. So the combination of the two, once they finished stuffing it in there, made the ball hard enough, not as hard as current golf balls, but made it hard enough to, that they, the good hitters could on a good day, if it was dry, could it possibly hit the ball 150, 60 yards. And how long did it take to make one? It, they could, the expert guys could make about two or three in a day. Whoa, so you yeah. don't want to lose one of those things. Well, those days, golf was only for the wealthy guys, the, the, the nobles and so on, because the common man couldn't afford to uh, buy the balls, because even, you know, in those days, whatever the standard was so much different from ours, but they were too expensive for the average guy, because a wet day and the damn ball could easily be ruined, or if the guy mishit it too many times, it could go to pieces. Oh, in fact, gosh. one of the rules was, if it did split that, you had to find some piece big enough to finish out the hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, well, well, anyway, so those are the tools that they... Uh, used to stuff it in. Those are the different tools that they had to use it by hand and by shoulder push and so on. And it's hard to conceive that they could get a full top hat full of feathers into that small, small ball, ball because it's about the same size approximately as the balls we use today. There was no restriction on sizes. Therefore, some guys made some that were small that they figured going into the wind would go better and the larger ones to hit downwind. Ah. But they didn't vary much from the general size that we have. All right, well, thanks very much for that story. Okay, I sure appreciate right, okay. it, Frank. Thanks right, very right, much. Okay, if you can use